Good morning again. This is week 8 now, not much to go yet. This week we'll take a look at the same kind of models we saw last week, which is logistic regression models, but now instead of Bernoulli data, we look at binomial data. Now it's not very often we have binomial data, but sometimes we do have it, and it's an interesting problem here, and another way of looking at the same kind of models. So we'll ba basically today look at the models we saw last week, which is logistic regression models, and then we'll take a look at how we use those models for binomial counts. There's slight differences in how the models are fitted. Then we'll look at inferences and then model assessment. This relates to our textbook, chapters 21, sections 1 to 4. If you have the book, look at them, or you can find the book in the library. So we know that the generalized linear model here is a little different from what we consider to be the normal model. Here we have the family is the exponential family. We don't say much about this, but generally speaking, this is the kinds of things which involve some kinds of exponential functions here. But these kinds of families include the normal, the binomial, Bernoulli, of course, is a special case, and the Poisson and other such distributions. The predictor here is going to be not the actual observation, but something else, which is going to be as a linear regression of the covariates. And the link function here is what we call, the G function here, is what we actually model in this case as the, re the response in the linear regression. And for the proportions, it is the log of the odds ratio. And in this case, the mean of yi, our data, which is Bernoulli, is going to be pi i, the probability of success here, which is the inverse of this g function. And uh, this is g inverse of nita i. Nita i here, if you like, this, this, is, this is our g function. And so if g pi i is equal to nita i, then pi i is the inverse of this nita i. Now, these are the math math mathematical aspects which you don't need to pay too much attention to, but we will go through some of these anyway. So, let's take a look at the comparison of the Gaussian regression against the logistic regression. Where the Gaussian, it's the response is taken as normally distributed, and so the link function is just the identity, identity function, because essentially we are modeling the mean of the distribution here. The variance here is assumed to be constant. When we look at logistic regression here, with the binomial of Bernoulli as the distribution of the data, of the response, then the link function is the logic, logic link function, which is the log of the odds ratio. And the variance here is a function of the mean. So if you look at logit here, it's going to be log of the odds ratio. So it's p over 1 minus p, or pi, whichever. And so, the mean here is going to be, for the Bernoulli is P, and the variance here for the Bernoulli is P times 1 minus P. And so the mean is a function, a mean variance is a function of the mean. You can see how it works out here. If you look at the ratio of the variance to the mean, you'll find the ratio is 1 minus P. The data structure here is going to be essentially columns of this kind, where we have one of the one of the variables is the response variable. In this case, we might take here uh, for the Gaussian, we might take height, for example, as a response here. But if you're looking at something like survival in this case, that's going to be binary, so that's our logistic response, and we have the other things as our covariates here. For the Gaussian regression, the mean is simply mu, and this is what we're going to model. This is our response, if you, this is our response, if you like, in the end. And in the logistic regression, the mean is pi, but we don't model the pi, we model a function of the pi. So we've seen all this before. In the logistic regression model, logit pi i is log of pi i over 1 minus pi i. So pi i is the probability of success for the i observation individual, which will depend in some way on the other covariates. We know that as pi i goes towards 1, the bottom line becomes 0, so the logit function goes towards positive infinity, 
and when pi i goes towards 0, we have the top line becomes 0, the whole function becomes 0 in the, in the brackets, and the log of 0 goes towards negative infinity. So the logit function gives us the full range or the full real line. The data here is binary, y i is either 1 or 0, with probability is pi i and 1 take pi i. And the probability that the random variable capital y i takes a value y i small y i, either 0 or 1, is pi i to the y i, 1 minus pi i to the 1 take y i. So you can see if I take my y i to be equal to 1, this term here becomes 0, which means the whole bracket to the power of 0 becomes 1, I get pi i simply. That's probability of success. If I take y i to be 0, then this here is 0, so that term becomes 1, and this here term is going to be 1, y i is 0, and I get 1 take pi i as probability of failure. And we know that if we, infer, if we invert the logistic or the logit function, we get pi i here is going to be exponential of beta naught plus beta 1 x i over 1 plus that. And so we know that pi i here, because the bottom line is bigger than the top line, is, will always be less than 1, but also bigger than 0, because all of the terms in this are positive. For binomial counts, things are a little bit different here. We saw how to build models for the Bernoulli distribution, Bernoulli counts, last week. It's a very similar idea with some differences over here. And in both of those, we have exactly the same idea. We're modeling here the probability of success as a function of the other variables in the model. The good example here is from the book. What we're looking at here is bird extinction. And so this is from a paper. You can see the references there. You can look for those references up your stuff if you wish. So scientists agree generally that preserving certain habitats in the natural state helps slow species extinction. But whether to have many small reserves or a few large ones is something that's debatable. And this is what we will be looking at. And of course, data here helps to make these kinds of decisions. So the example here is that scientists conducted bird surveys over four decades in the Krunit Islands archipelago which retained its natural habitat. And what they measured was at risk. This is the number of species on the island in 1949. Extinction is the number of species that were deemed to be extinct in 1959, in other words, in this 10-year period. So this is a species that was found in 1949, but was not found in 1959. So this is the number that became extinct in the 10-year period. And the area is the area in kilometers squared of each of the islands here. The question here is, is there a relationship between the island's area and the probability of extinction in, for the species? So here's the data. You'll find this in the library sleuth. So sleuth 3, and Kunit is the data. It's case 2101. If you look at the data, you've got the island itself, the area, the at risk, this is the number of bird species that were there in 1949, and extinct are the number that were no longer there in 1959. And so what we were looking for each, for each island is an estimate of pi i, which is extinct over at risk. So how many became extinct compared to how many were at risk? And we're going to compare this. If you compare this with the previous data structures, we're not looking at that kind of ratio here. Here we're looking at this ratio. So in many ways, here, if you look at this, what I've got here is a binomial distribution. I've got the number of trials is given here in this column, which is 75 in for the first species in the first island. And the success here in, case, in this case is the number that are extinct here. So I've got in this case 75 trials of which five were successes in the next 67 trials out of which three are successes and so on. You find here in the binomial situation the number of trials is not necessarily the same in each case. That's one of the differences we find with the Bernoulli. The model here is going to be E of Zi over Mi, so Mi is the number of, of in, in the trial, number of trials, and Zi here is the number that actually became extinct in 
and the expected value here given m i is a constant is just pi i. Now, these are count proportions. The proportion we're looking at over here is a count proportion. Both z i and m i are whole numbers. z i is an integer, and so is m i. If you could, if you look at some other kinds of proportions, you might find they are not the same. We have, for example, continuous proportions where both z i and m i are continuous, or at least one of usually z i is continuous. So in this case, for example, we're looking at proportion of fat by weight, and of course both those quantities here are going to be continuous. So count and continuous proportions are not the same thing, and you can't use the same techniques. What we're looking at here is count proportions, and that's why we can model this as binomial, otherwise we can't. The probability model here is the same as before, so we have mi is the total number of species on island i. We know each of the mi's, these are at risk. Pi i is probability a species becomes extinct on island i, and zi is the random variable representing the number of species that became extinct on island i as counted in 1959. The logistic regression model here we have probability of zi equals small zi is the binomial distribution. And here the mean for zi, the mean number that becomes extinct is mi pi i. The variance is mi pi i one take pi i. That comes from the mean and variance of the binomial distribution. And we're going to model pi i here as a function of the explanatory variables. So pi i here is the probability that a species becomes extinct on island i. So z is binomial m pi. Proportion here is z over m. m is the number of trials. Observations here are for i equals 1 to n, z i is binomial. For the m i is changing. And pi i here, pi is going to be, well, it seems to be fixed for the island at least, but it will depend on the covariates here. And so the observations here what we've got here is going to be binomial mi pi i. Now this here should be an i. I uh, missed that. I shall fix that later in the slides. There's an i mi here. So the binomial regression here proceeds in the same way uh, with the logit function. We know that the mean here is mi pi i, which is proportional to pi i. mi is known here. And so the regression equation is the same, but still logit of pi i and it's a regression in terms of the covariates. Look at the data, just to see what's going on here. We've got a summary of the data over here. We've got area here at risk and extinct. Now you might be able to see something from there straight away, but what this, what you see is that the area of the islands is very different. The minimum is 0 0.07 square kilometers, and the largest is 185 square kilometers. Very different indeed. So the area is very skewed. Also, we have a total of 12 islands. And the at risk goes all the way from 6 to 75, again quite different. And the extinct goes from 2 to 30. Now, if you look at the data and for a histogram of the island's areas, this is what we see here, we saw earlier, that there are some very small islands and a few very large islands. Now you couldn't tell that just by looking at the numbers, but from the plot it's quite clear. And you can see that there will be a problem with modeling, because they're just so disparate, the island areas. If we take a look at the log of the area, it pulls them together. We know that taking logs pulls the right tail in, so that will make it more symmetric. And the data now becomes more continuous. So it's easier here to model the log of the area than the area itself. So, we have two variables we'll create to add to this data frame. The first is the proportions zi over mi. These are empirical proportions. These are what we actually observe in the data here. And uh, we can use this to see how these proportions relate to the area of the data, or area of the islands. And 
we will use the log transformed area. Here, the second point what we're saying is if we look at the plots of the empirical, empirical proportions against the area, we get some idea of what the relationship is like. So here is the new data, what we've added on here, we've got empirical proportions here. So remember that within uh, a data frame, we'll modify the data frame and add variables to it. So I've got log area is the log of the area, and the empirical proportions is extinct over at risk. And this is our new data. Here are some more plots. We've got the plot of the log of area as the x-axis, and the proportions, empirical proportions on the y-axis. We can see there seems to be some linear relationship over here. Whether it's linear or whether it's curved is something we can consider. In other words, do we actually put in some kind of curve over here, a square or some kind of exponential curve is another question to ask later. But at the moment, it does look like there is some relationship between the log of the area and the empirical proportions. If you take a look at the logs of both of these things, log of the empirical proportion here, certainly that makes it more linear. So we were saying earlier here that there may be some curvature there, and certainly the log of proportions here makes more sense here than just proportions. And of course we know that the model we, we use here, the logistic regression here, actually does model exactly that, the log of the logit function there, log of the odds ratio. So that certainly looks like it's linear now, and that looks like what, we, we, what we're modeling here makes sense. So the model as we have it is when we use the logit of the pi i, and this is a simple regression because all we've got is log of the area here. Nothing else changes here as far as the modeling is concerned. So here's the data and the model. We shall take that up in the next lecture. Thank you. Bye.